Hey everybody, it's Dr. Jones here at the high school, and I just want to say thank you to all the veterans out there. It's as simple as that. Just thank you. The dictionary says that a veteran is somebody who has had military experience, and you, you think about the United States military, the greatest military on the face of the earth. They're out there, and they're protecting us from all the bad guys. If we look at the history of the different wars that our military has fought, if we go backwards chronologically, obviously the, the War on Terror, Desert Storm, the Vietnam War, the Korean War, the Cold War, the uh, World War II, World War I, the Spanish-American War, the Mexican-American War, the War of 1812, and all the way back to the Revolutionary War, our veterans have fought for us. Again, thank you. We just, in my history class, we just finished talking about the, the War of 1812, and that reminds me uh, about the Star Spangled Banner, which, as I'm thinking about that, I need to share with you some advice. I've been, uh, I've been teaching here at Western Heights, actually I've been a jet all the way since I was a kindergartner back in the 70s, but uh, let's just say that I've, I've seen a lot of students uh, sing the Star Spangled Banner at the football games, at basketball games, at assemblies, and we have had some very talented people. <laughs> very, very talented students. Here's the advice I would give to you. If you're ever selected, if you, or you, if you ever volunteered to sing the Star Spangled Banner at a football game, do this. Don't wait till the last second to run up the steps to then run up to the press box and then grab the microphone and sing. Here's why. First of all, the Star Spangled Banner, it's what, an octave and a half, so it's kind of tough to sing anyway. But two, if you're out of breath, <laughs> it's almost impossible. So give yourself plenty of time, plenty of time. So why do we sing the Star Spangled Banner, right? I mean, what's, what's the big deal about that? Back in 1889, the United States Navy adopted it as an important military uh, song. And then in 1916, President Woodrow Wilson uh, said, you know what, we need to start singing this at various military engagements and or other uh, assemblies. And then in 1931, uh, the Congress passed, passed a bill that said uh, that the Star Spangled Banner would be our national anthem. And it was signed, signed uh, by President uh, Herbert Hoover. So it is our national anthem. I, I think it would be really interesting if we actually answered the question, right? At the football game, when the person sings or the band plays, and we have the last line that says, and the home of the brave, and we all paused, and then we answered the question. Can you imagine during the OU-OSU football game, 90,000 people in the stands, and when the singer finishes that last note, everybody answers the question. Now, I know some of you are sitting here thinking, is there a question? I don't know what the answer is. Yes, it's a yes-no question. So let me, tell you, let me tell you what the question is. To do that, I need to back up a little bit. In the War of 1812, the United States was fighting Great Britain. That was our second war with Great Britain. And... Uh, in the year 1814, so two years in, there was a prisoner exchange. So the United States, we had a 35-year-old, his name was uh, Francis Scott Key. He was a lawyer and a, uh, a poet, I suppose. He was put in charge of going to a ship, a British ship, to uh, bargain for prisoners, for, to do a prisoner exchange. So he and his friend go to the ship, the HMS Tunnet, and they have dinner with the admiral, the British admiral and the captain. During the dinner, the British admiral and the captain are talking about how uh, in a couple of days, they are going to uh, bombard Fort McHenry right there in the Baltimore Harbor. So as they're negotiating, the American Francis Scott Key is negotiating with the British soldiers, uh, or the sailors, uh, and everything's going great and everything's going fine. And Francis Scott Key says, okay, well, I'll see you later. And the Admiral said, hey, bad news. Um, you were here when we talked about our military plans for the next couple of days. And so uh, we can't let you off the ship. If we let you off the ship, then you're going to go, you know, 
rat us out, and then so we're not going to let you go. You're not necessarily a prisoner, but we're not, we're not going to let you go until after we bomb this fort. So Francis Scott Key had to stay on the ship. He actually, he was transferred to a couple of different ships during the time, but the British decided to go after Fort McHenry right there in the, in the Baltimore Harbor. All right, so the story says that the, 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 the fort has a flag, you know, an American flag, and as the light was going down, as the dusk was coming, twilight was coming, as the twilight, as the sun was going down, Francis Scott Key looked up and over the ramparts, and the ramparts is just a fancy word for wall, over the ramparts of the fort, he could see the flag. And then the, the light went out, the sun went down, and then the bombing of the fort began to take place. And so all these British ships started to bomb the fort. Well, Francis Scott Key, who couldn't do anything about it because he's on the ship and he can't get off the ship because he's not allowed to yet, he's watching the, the bombardment. And as the night goes on, the bombs that are bursting in the air and the rocket's red glare as it's attacking the fort, all those things are going off, he can still see the flag for the fla during the flashes of the, of the bombs. He can see the flag. Then, when the bombing is over, and of course it's, it's still dark, he, he asks himself, man, when the dawn shows up, when the light comes up, is the flag going to still be there? Because if it's down, if there's no flag, that means that the fort surrendered. But if the flag is still up, then they know, uh, he knows that the soldiers of Fort McHenry are still fighting. So he asks himself this question. Francis Scott asks himself this question. And the story says that he, he wrote down his thoughts. Uh, he, wrote, he wrote a poem. And his poem goes something like this. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? So what he just said was, can we see in the morning what we saw last night? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight over the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming? And he's talking about the flag. He says... Last night, we watched it over the walls, and there it was, and it was gallantly you know, flapping in the wind. And then he says, The rocket's red glare and the bombs bursting in air, well, those gave proof through the night that our flag was still there, because he could see it, right? And then he ends his first stanza of his poem with, Oh, say, can you see, uh, oh, oh, say, does that star-spangled banner still wave? or the land of the free and the home of the brave? It's a question. In fact, the entire stanza that we sing is a question. And it's a yes or no question. So in the morning, when the fog of war and all the stuff, and here comes the light of the sun, and he looked up and he saw the flag. So the answer is yes. The flag was still there. The soldiers at Fort McHenry did not surrender under that bombardment. The flag was still there. The answer to the question is yes. Can you imagine at the OU-OSU football game, the 90,000 people in the stand, the singer's down there and, and she is singing, uh, and the home of the brave, and everybody, all 90,000 people say, yes, it's still there. And it's still there today, right, in the year 2020. Thank you, veterans. Thank you, veterans. From all of us here at the high school, from all of us here in the district, from all of us here in Oklahoma, for all of us here in our, in our country. Thank you for everything you've done and everything that you guys, are, you guys and gals are continuing to do for us. Okay. Thanks for listening, and go Jets!